Good morning, dear participants of EAT 2019. I am extremely happy uh, to introduce you to the first speaker, Thomas Hirschhorn. He is an outstanding artist, a lighthouse, who in the last decades has created many unforgettable and very inspiring artworks, many of them as large-scale public events. One can say that the exp he expanded our ideas of what art is. He says, I work for a non-exclusive uh, audience, and yet he, is dedicate he, dedicates, he, sorry, he dedicates his ephemeral public monuments and altars to philosophers, writers, artists from the past, such as Spinoza, Ingeborg Bachmann, Natalie Goncharova, Meret Oppenheim, Gramsci, Deleuze, uh, Ingeborg Bachmann. <clears throat> um, his attitude is that of a fan, someone who is passionate and positive. He sees this as a cure, an antidote to nihilism. Before I pass the word to Thomas, who grew up in Davos, I would like to mention his Wirtschaftslandschaft Davos, created in 2001, um, the economic landscape Davos, that's a translation. Uh, he developed it uh, at the Kunsthaus Zurich. It is now in the collection of the Kunsthaus Aarau. It is a complex statement picturing a mountain landscape which has been violently, violently occupied, an image also of a beautiful place and its cultural history. It is somehow ironic that it follows Wef Davos. Here in Zwots, in all modesty, we are maybe building up a kind of counter event or better, a complementary event. Here at EAT, we are convinced of the urgency and relevance of the impulses sent out of culture and the need to be also heard in the realm of economy and politics. And I give now the word to Thomas. Thank you very much, Nietzsche, for these uh, beautiful and sensible words. And thank you, Christina, for your warm words. Uh, today I wanted to share with you, uh, in my practice as an artist, some moments of grace. Uh, you, you will not believe me, perhaps, but uh, uh, since I was invited here uh, for this uh, talk, about uh, grace and gravity, I didn't read Simone Weil. But uh, the, t the term of grace is meaningful to me. And uh, he is accompanying me since years. Every year in my to-do notice I write, I must be touched by grace. So what I want to do, I want to show some pictures. The picture I show you are more illustrations because, as you know, grace cannot be documented. They're just illustration in order that you get um, uh, the, com the context of, of, of this. Uh, this is my uh, one ongoing exhibition. And in this exhibition, and this is the first moment of grace, uh, often happen that people are sleeping, sleeping in my work. I think... Uh, 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 sleepers in a work of art is uh, a sign of, of peace and also a sign that these people are confident. They are confident in the work, they are confident in the art. That's for, therefore, to me, this is a sign of, of grace. This happened in Palais de Tokyo, in Paris. Um, so, moments of grace, in my experience, um, they are not arising or not uh, often arising when there are a lot of people. They mostly arising to me or when I can catch them when there are few people. Sometimes only one person, sometimes 
a group of persons, sometimes a small group. This woman, her name is Toko, she came every day in the Palais de Tokyo. She came every day watching uh, videos. In another work of mine in, in, in the Bronx in uh, 2013, Mrs. Jenkins and Mrs. Fay, residents of forest houses, public housing, they came every day attending the program, the lectures of the Gramsci Monument. Uh, recently, in 2018, in another work I did in, in Canada, in a workshop uh, for one month, Brady, he came every day uh, to share with us uh, uh, his uh, uh, competence. And another ongoing work I do now in China, uh, just a curator sent me a, a, a report that there is somebody there also every day uh, making a production, or almost every day. So these moments, or these, uh, there are moments for, of grace when people are coming every day, but it's not only that they are coming every day, it's more also because I, there is a mystery why they are coming and spending time in the work. And that's for me something who counts. Um, I think as an artist, uh, in order that grace can appear, I must work a lot. I must uh, lose myself in my work. I must go on a point that uh, uh, even the question of emptiness of my own work or senselessness of my own works appears. And that happened to me. And then, and th sometimes I think grace can then appear. At, uh, the pr at, at, the, at the beginning or at the uh, construction or before the Gramsci monument I did in 2013, I, 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 um, I was looking for a location. I went to 44 public housings in New York, in all of her five boroughs of New York City. 44 um, uh, field works I did in order to find a person or, or a neighborhood or a community who wants uh, to uh, uh, welcome my work. This is Clyde Thompson. He's a social, social worker at um, Forest Houses. So when I encountered him and presented my work, and this is the, a moment of grace, he asked me what will be the benefit for our community. And I told him, I'm not pretending to work for your community, but I'm pretending to work in for art. And he got the point immediately and said, oh, that's interesting me, that an artist comes speaking about art. And therefore, the Gramsci monument uh, uh, was in forest houses because him, Clyde Thompson, understood. And this was the moment of grace in this process of finding a location for my work. Another moment of grace I had at the Gramsci monument. This is my friend, Markus Steinmeck, the philosopher. He had everyday lectures there. Lectures not about Gramsci, but lectures about uh, philosophy, about art, about everyday purpose. One of the lectures was God was named God is dead. And uh, during this lecture, after the lecture, uh, one of the residents of Forest Houses, she, she uh, interrogated, um, she asked, she questioned Marcus, but Marcus, how can you tell us God is dead? To us who are here in Forest Houses in the South Bronx, who goes to church, who have an import, uh, who, uh, um, who the religion is very important, um, in order to do our everyday, to, to, to fight in our everyday life. So the moment of grace was when Marcus, long and calm and very clearly explained explain to this person, that he, to him as a philosopher, he cannot think with any border. He cannot think with religion. He cannot think with uh, a limit and with offense, and the person understood it very well. Um, during this workshop, what can I learn from you? What can you learn from me, which I made, which I made uh, last year in, uh, in Saskatoon, in, uh, in Canada? Um, I tried uh, to ask the people um, uh, to, to share their competence to share their competence, uh, which each other. And uh, one day, 
uh, a person, Cheryl is her name, a First Nation woman, she came and she shared with her, was her, her residential school experience. Uh, the residential school was the system in Canada from the late eight, uh, 19th century until 1990. Uh, they had in order to remove all uh, tradition, all uh, uh, all tradition, all culture of the native Canadian people. All the kids had to go to residential school. So she uh, she told about her experience, her traumatic experience. Um, and at this moment, uh, uh, a class of young uh, Canadian teenagers came for one hour. They were listening. Uh, and uh, to to this uh, to this speech and uh, learning about the trauma and I think this uh, to me this was a beautiful moment of grace. So uh, um, at the Belmer Spinoza Festival, this was a, a work I did uh, again with a, in, in a neighborhood in Amsterdam, a public housing neighborhood. I wanted to um, I wanted to propose uh, a new kind of element in my work, the, in this festival, the element I call it the, was the ambassador. The, this is uh, the ambassador, is, uh, she's Vittoria Martini, she's an uh, Italian art uh, historian and her task, her mission was to welcome people to respond on all questions arise about art and culture, not about my work, but in general about art, because I wanted that somebody can can hear uh, because she's an artist and speak about art. And uh, the moment of grace was when one day a woman came and uh, presented this book and said, please, um, uh, Vittoria, please, Ambassador, explain me the content of this book. Um, another uh, work I did, uh, it's for, uh, it was in Biennale Wiesbaden. It was a work for 10 days, like kind of living sculpture outside. Uh, the term means the real, Wirklichkeit, the real. I, I worked, uh, 20, this was for 10 days, 24 hours, with residents of the city of Wiesbaden. Um, um, when I chose the location, I didn't, I was not aware that this, by the way, was the location of the local alcoholic people, the people who, who drink, who, who drinks a lot there. And uh, that was their location. So in the beginning, there was um, quite, quite a harsh welcoming, but then, and this is the moment of grace to me, then we developed a kind of coexistence together with these people, uh, which, uh, which I think it's not, only, it's not only that it is possible uh, in this reality to have a coexistence, but also uh, sometimes, uh, 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 is important or puts the light on how important it is uh, to choose or to die to decide for the creation of an artwork and then to deal with, with what uh, happened. Um, when I made uh, the Musée Precaire Albinet, and I want to also speak about uh, failures because I think uh, Grace goes behind failures and behind success. Uh, fa uh, grace is not, uh, not, cannot count as a success. Um, um, I wanted to, uh, to tell you that uh, I, I wanted to do an artwork uh, in a suburb of Paris uh, with original artwork of the Centre Pompidou. Uh, my plan was for eight weeks to show eight original artworks in, in a in, a, in, the bay, in, a, in front of a public housing in Aubervilliers. So I had to, to deal with the, with the Centre Pompidou that they lent me uh, us the artworks. Um, the failure was uh, that even when I planned one year, it was not enough time. So I was very embarrassed that I couldn't stand uh, the, uh, the schedule because I, I, I proposed, I, pr I promised the people from the neighborhood they will come these artworks, and they couldn't because administration complexity. Um, so I was very impressed. So I went back uh, to the neighborhood and explained them my problem, and also uh, gift, I gave them the 
I, I told them, look, um, I, will, I will do something else or uh, we can wait. And perhaps there is a chance that the artworks are coming. And uh, why I told I tell it this? Because this was the moment of grace. You know, nobody knows it. Only me. I mean, because I was there. So, and it's not important as such, but therefore it is important to me and gives me uh, the confidence and also sometimes uh, the, uh, the feeling that I'm doing the right work. So what happened at the people, unanimity, they say, Thomas, we will wait. So it was very good also to see that they understood my project. They understood the importance of these original artworks in their neighborhood. And also it gave me a power towards the institution to tell them, look, now you have really to lend us the artworks because the people are waiting for it. So another failure, uh, this was Theatre Precaire, I did, I made it. Uh, also, it was a kind of uh, sculpture animated once a day with also a, th a play, a theatre play in, in, in Rennes, in, uh, uh, in a Biennale. Um, I made this play with a residents, also of uh, public housing. Um, it was in the base, it was in the garage, the collective garage. I decided to do the collective garage. So after the opening, a few days after, that what happened. So uh, somebody burned down and I was of course, uh, uh, I was shocked and uh, I was in trouble and in difficulty. So I wrote a letter to the residents in order to explain and to work out the problematic and also um, uh, what, can, what, what should I do. And then we did a, we did a, um, a, 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 a discussion together. And um, why there was a moment of grace? Because everybody said, no problem, Thomas. That happened always to us. Uh, that a person, a person will, will uh, does uh, burn cars in this garage. Therefore, it's always empty. Uh, so they, they, uh, um, they, they told me, no, we will redo it and replay it. And, uh, um, and uh, why it is important to me? Because um, um, it is not this discourse of vandalism. And of, um, they told me it's not against you, it's not against art, it's not against our project. It's just what people do. It's a part of our reality. So therefore, I redid it and we read it together and Theater Precaire. We did not more do it, we didn't again do it in the garage, but we did it just in another um, in an, an, uh, uh, empty location just beside. Um, so my last, my next um, project will be um, the Robert Walzer sculpture uh, this year and um, it's not done but I made a lot of field work I made already 12 field works that means I was 12 times in um, in Biel in order to find people who works with me and also there I have uh, two graceful moments uh, so one was uh, you know I went to to the Gassenküche Gassenküche means where you can go to to eat for free food. I met a, a person, his, his name is Christian, and we had, like often the case, uh, a harsh discussion uh, as an artist, you know, the skepticism, you know, this all the criticism, the skepticism comes up, and okay. Uh, and two, three times we had this discussion, and once, uh, the fourth time he came and told me, I want to participate in your project. So I was really happy about this. And then, but what is the graceful moment is that he told me, sometimes I have to go to Waldau. You know, Waldau is the psychiatric clinic where Robert Walzer was. So I was really, I think this was a beautiful moment of things coming together. So I'm happy that Christian will be part of the project. Um, and then another, for me as an artist who are working or fighting, another graceful moment was, um, this is Mr. Rebetes. He's a taxi driver. He's a freelance taxi driver. And as, as freelance taxi driver, he did opposition against my work. And you know, in Switzerland, this is serious. So you have to work it out. So, um, uh, and then I tried, to, I tried to meet him and to find a solution. Uh, how he could uh, he could be fine, and we did twi twi two times, three times. I met him, and then uh, he removed 
his opposition. But it's not about this I wanted to, this is not what is graceful. Uh, and then, um, in order to work with the taxi drivers, uh, I, um, I asked, uh, I proposed to do like a, a kind of, to integrate them in my work in the Robert Walzer sculpture in proposing a taxi, a taxi ride with Robert Walzer. And uh, um, we organized a meeting with Mr. Rebetes and other uh, colleagues. And again, there was uh, this skepticism, this criticism against the artist, whatever, coming up. And Mr. Rebetes, very, I, I was so surprised and shocked. I already thought, OK, it's vain. But he, uh, in a very nice way, defended and convinced my project and convinced his colleagues to be part of the project. So um, I really want to thank uh, to, the, to Christina, to Hans Ulrich, um, uh, uh, to, uh, who is the other, sorry, who organized this here? Because thanks to you, I really read. I started to read uh, uh, Simone Weil. And uh, uh, I, I only spoke here about grace because it was the term I used before. And I will switch over now into the term of gravity. Thank you. Thank you very much for this insight, which is so uh, passionate and has probably uh, caused some questions in, in the audience. <laughs> no one? So, you spoke a lot uh, about grace and it's so surprising how uh, how you and and very clear how you describe that it is a moment you cannot predict it just comes um, and gravity somehow it was only um, in implication in 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 what you showed as images you didn't really talk about um, gravity maybe you add this aspect in yes i will try but um, um you know my, my my only competence to speak here is because my work of art so i'm not a theoretician so i'm a practitioner of art and therefore i can speak about grace because i use the term myself so therefore i can only speak about grace um, to me it's very important as an artist to keep to keep close uh, to my work and to keep uh, connected absolutely with the reality comes out of my work. But uh, I'm, I'm, I will try to read and to learn about gravity. <laughs> we, we all know that you know a lot about gravity. <laughs> but also the, the places you choose to do your uh, artwork. Of course, you work in galleries, you work in uh, museums, but then you're incredibly daring. You choose places that no other artist would ever have the courage to, to uh, come and, and uh, work there. And this is the brilliance, the intelligence of, uh, of uh, your art, I think. And uh, these places are really connected to what we think of uh, being, uh, yes, places with, with a, a, a very strong gravity, uh, which cannot be ignored, but most of the time we leave them, we leave them aside. Yeah, I learned so much of uh, with th this contact with uh, the non-exclusive audience, the people I meet in public space, but also in the museum when I'm present. I I think um, this is very refreshing um, to to speak with people who are not um, yet 
uh, completely into art. And um, you, as an artist, um, I can learn a lot, I think. And this is the challenge either. Or it's a challenge on one side. And on the other side, it's also a gift. And uh, therefore, uh, I, for me, perhaps you saw it in these pictures. Uh, to me, grace arrives always with persons, with people, with somebody, a group, a small group, or one person. And this is, gives, me, um, gives me the courage to continue to work even when the space seems um, uh, abandoned or uh, very complicated or difficult. I have to think about uh, Joseph Beuys, who was uh, expanding his idea, uh, or our idea of art and uh, uh, culture, and uh, yet he was a preacher. He somehow uh, was standing there and he was preaching. You are not a preacher, and this is a, a, a big step towards uh, another direction. Thank you very much, BJ. Because no, no, really, because because often people say to me, your terms, you use grace, mission. Also, I have a mission as an artist. Yes, they told me that uh, comes from another world. But I, th I told them, no, to me, this is hardcore. This is something hardcore. And, and um, to me, th I'm very happy that you see this. Yes, it's a hardcore. Uh, grace is a hardcore. You have to fight so uh, much with yourself that there is a change and you lose yourself. You have to lose yourself. You have to, I think, I mean, I have to completely be um, in, 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 even asking my sen myself about the sense of my own work, that there is a moment perhaps who grace can, can appear. That really I experienced. And has not, this has really not, nothing to do uh, with, uh, with religion. Do we have, ah, yes? I have a question, Thomas. Um, so your early work, um, one could say it was uh, the, the grace was maybe in the absence, and now the grace is in the presence. So can you say a few words how you, how you transitioned from one to the other? And also, do you consider your art basically being a tool, your installations? Thank you. You are art historian, no? Yes, yes. yes. That's nice that, no, really always that, they see, I mean, from the, from the absence to uh, <laughs> the presence. I didn't, I bet that's nice, that's very good. Now look, at the beginning, I... <laughs> <laughs> now I just started small, like I think every artist, no? Small, doing my own work. Uh, they, I made a lot of work uh, nobody saw, for example, in the public space, nobody saw. And then, of course, with time, um, with the experience, you wanted to implicate more people and start, and then also with uh, bad experience, like failures, we, because I made failures in, in not enough uh, implicating people, so I have to learn, uh, for example, at the Dulles Monument, where I was not present all the time, so I had to progress. So it's a progression on one side, like, uh, I mean, it has to do with an ambition, but it has also to do to if I'm working in public space. What offers this all to you? The complexity of the problematic of per, uh, public space. So I wanted to completely go in inside, not only do a sculpture in front of a, uh, um, of a, uh, the, uh, the, uh, bank. No. So therefore, uh, um, I made so far 70 projects, which I hope, in a way, uh, are more complex. And in each one, I try to learn from the other one and also to, to introduce something new, but also to keep truthful to what always was interesting me. And coming back to your question of the tool, yes, I mean, to me, art is a tool, yeah, to confront uh, reality. And I had uh, to confront it all the time, reality. As an artist, I think we have to do this. Then uh, to encounter the world. It's a tool to encounter the world. I can travel to Tsuots. I can travel to India. Next month, I'm first time in India. I can travel to China. It's encounter the world through my work. So it's a tool. And also to live in the time I'm living in. The time today. I mean, uh, where we are with the, with the problematics. Uh, uh, some of them uh, BJ mentioned before. So I have to deal with this. Therefore, I see it as a tool. And also a tool because I'm a worker. So I, I like 
to use this tool as a worker. And sometimes, you know, the workers need also use the wrong tool or use the tool not, not so good. But still, it's a tool. And uh, this is interesting me in the term of tool. Other questions? Otherwise, yes? Uh, I think there's a microphone. Yes, a long time ago I was a Protestant pastor. So after the artist, the pastor. Uh, did you also experience grace by this fortune, by opposing, real opposing to your plans, which also brought you to new experiences? Um, in my, we were Catholics in my family. Now that Philipp Ursprung has also a question. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, thank you. You spoke about getting lost or losing yourself. Uh, can you say something more about that? Because uh, on the other hand, you are always very present, uh, looking at, at the work of art, being uh, participating, controlling every step. How does this losing happen? Not the losing is, um, um, yeah. Look, I think every artist knows this, more or less. There is a phase of uh, catastrophe if, when you do the artwork. Um, that, uh, I mean, you have intentions, you have ideas, uh, you have a will, you have fun, uh, but then at one point, and each artwork or almost each artwork, even the big ones, the complex ones, at one point, uh, it costs to me, it happened. It, it is too much. It is too much. And um, the only way I saw, and that therefore I call this you losing, the only way I saw is to kneel down and to tape or, you know, to do like automatically, like mechanically, continuing to do something. I forgot for a moment, for a moment, I forgot the real reason why I do it. I don't want to exaggerate this or to... It's just um, <laughs> that what I was meaning with losing. I can give an anecdote or simple example, but it has to do with this moment that you want something in a way which is too big, no, must be too big, which is new, which is which you think, of course, it's you as an artist, you think it's new, it's never done, so it's too big for you. <laughs> so then you have this moment, there, and even the doubts arrive, and even kind of, senselessness in what you're doing arrive and that is when I feel lost but then the only way to do and this, this I think is the competence must me my competences are this that I continue just to do it and to work and then sometimes something graceful happen Thomas, thank you so, so much for this amazing speech. And I wanted to ask you something because <clears throat> some years ago I spoke to Panamarenko, you know, the amazing Belgian artist who always wanted to fly. And he did it on the Forca, uh, or tried. Uh, and we can't have him here because, you know, he officially retired uh, and lives in Belgium. And, uh, but of course his spirit is here with this theme. Um, and we spoke with Panamarenko about this idea, you know, that certain projects can't get to grace because the gravity makes it impossible. So, you know, his unrealized project to fly. And so I wanted to ask you um, if there are projects you always wanted to do 
which you haven't been able to do yet. If you could tell us about, you know, one of your unrealized projects or one of your dreams or one of your utopias. Yes, I have a, a lot of projects I, I couldn't do. Um, I, I was not able. I had not enough forces to do. Um, not enough support sometimes also. So, um, but Hans Ulrich, I want, I don't want to declare them because I have still the hope to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but it's important. It's important be really because sometimes um, I know um, and I know that there is there is time, I mean, there is still some time, and I must also count with the time. There will perhaps the time come and I can do it. So if I declare it now as non-done, um, uh, non I abandon this idea that perhaps is still a possibility to do. Sorry, who was it again? Hi there. Should I stand up or what? Sitting down is okay, I think. Um, I have a question because I think within grace and within seeing grace happening and evolving, you have to give the dignity to that space. So you have to allow um, the form of dignity that you give to these people that you've experienced this time with, is that a state of mind that you've always had? Or is it something that maybe this project realized and you could focus on? And that's my question really, is it something that you evolved to be able to give that dignity for grace to show? Yeah, dignity is a beautiful word. I am a grievous dignity, I think, of course. Um, if you do work art, I think you must count on dignity. It means uh, non excluding nobody, no one with your work, and believing that art can implicate everybody all over. For example, I am still, even when I know I have a hard time uh, with defending it, I am still for universality the term of universality, uh, means that yes, uh, I have to encounter the other with, uh, with the only competence I have. For example, I be an, I'm an artist, I have an artist project. And this, and for, uh, there is one example I, thong, I think uh, here was for me very important, the meeting with Clyde Thompson, because immediately, he know that I don't want to make fake on him in saying I want to work for your community, for example. And, there, and therefore, we speak to each other from one to one. And therefore, um, I never will replace, for example, a social worker. I'm not a social worker. And I am an artist. And also, but I like um, there is a social worker and an artist. And also, I like it because uh, the relationship is you're right, based on dignity, but also on a conflict, and a conflict. And this conflict can only be, uh, you can only go through this conflict when you are uh, truthful to yourself. Me as an artist and the other person as, um, as, a, uh, as a social worker, for example. And therefore, uh, to me, it's just one to one that art, and that's what I can just repeat, that art has the power to implicate each one from one to one. If you lose this, if you think it's not possible, we need uh, somebody who makes the link, the bridge, if not the artwork can do it himself, then I think yes, then we must uh, we, uh, go away from the term of dignity between two, uh, two persons. Uh, the the um, uh, yes, I just want to say that uh, 
Thomas has written a beautiful short text, Why I am a formalist. So just in connection with, with what you said, and also to uh, tell the audience that all his writings are incredibly inspiring. And uh, there is a collection of his writing uh, published by MIT. And uh, yes, so if you want to know more, please buy this book. Thanks.